Greetings and salutations. Welcome to another episode of 365 Days of Gaming. Hope y'all doing good. I'm very excited about the game we're going to talk about today. This may be, if I had to pick one game, this might be the one game that's number one on my list. This might be my favorite game of all time. I know that may sound crazy. Some of the games that we've talked about, some of the games that we'll talk about, are probably some of your favorite games of all time. I understand that. But for me, me personally, this game might be my favorite game ever. And it is none other than Streets of Rage 2 for the Sega Genesis. Now, the reason why this game is so big to me and so important is, for one, it is a beat-em-up. And there are not many beat-em-ups being made anymore. At one point, it was a very, very uh, convoluted and packed genre. Uh, It is based off of the arcade games, which were designed for you to put a bunch of quarters in. Streets of Rage 2 isn't like this. Streets of Rage 2 is a console-only game. So some of the cheapness of some of the arcade beat-em-ups are gone. It is, a, to me, a very balanced and fair game. Another reason why this game is so important to me is that me and my brothers played this game so many times. Like, consecutive days. Of we beat the game, come home the next day from school, pop it back on, and play it like it was the first time we played it. In fact, pretty much there isn't a year that goes by that I haven't played this game in some form or fashion. I've purchased this game physically, I've purchased it digitally, for multiple platforms, and I'll probably end up buying it again. And I don't know, it's just something about this game that just makes me want to play it. It just calls me back. To give you an idea if you've never played Streets of Rage, right? Again, very 90s game. I played this first time probably around 94, 95, closer to 95 if I'm being more exact. And you play as these cops, Blaze and Axel. But there's also uh, Max, who's a wrestler, which wrestling's a big thing for me. That knows me, knows I love for wrestling. And then also Skate, which weren't many black characters in games back then. So having one that was actually like cool and also the brother of Adam from the first Streets of Rage which at the time I had not played yet, and later on I played it, gotta be honest, not for me. Just a little bit too old and not really as fluid as Streets of Rage 2. But you play these four characters, they all have their own individual special moves, Um, they have different combos, different fighting styles. For example, my brother Ron was a big skate guy. That was his guy, cannot touch skate. The only person who gets to play skate is Ron. Skate has the ability, as his name implies, to skate around, so he can run and dash and do a lot of Agile, high-flying moves. My brother Justin's character was Axel. He was like the main character. You know, he's the hard-nosed, tough, you know, main character, blonde hair, blue-eyed stereotype. But he's also got one of the coolest moves ever, which is the Grand Upper. Now, when we were kids, that move was called Grab the Paw. Don't, don't judge. Just understand we couldn't hear quite well because, let's be honest, the Sega Genesis sound card, not the greatest. I know, I know beating up on the poor Genesis, but I'll do that several times. I love the Genesis. That sound card left a lot to be desired. So we were thinking he was saying, grab the paw. No, it doesn't make sense, but that's what we thought we heard. But it's actually Grand Upper. I ended up playing with Max the Wrestler and Blaze just because, well, there's only four people. Skate's already gone. Axel's already gone. So by default, I got really good with those characters. I also snuck and played with those other two characters all the time by myself. So I know how to play those as well. Um, But the cool other thing about it was it was two players. And not a lot of games allowed you to play two players in a um, beat-em-up game. Like Double Dragon, the first one was single player. You had to take turns. So it was really cool to be able to jump in with someone and just play and just run through. Put it on easy and just have a breeze. Or you could do like we did on most days and put it on Mania and uh, hope to survive. Um, for one, incredible music. Again, Genesis Sound Card, a lot of games didn't do you know that great in that department, but when they did well, I mean, they killed it. Some of the best music from any video game, and I'm willing to put that on whatever you want to. Put it up against anybody. Streets of Rage 2 soundtrack, perfect. So with the music, the gameplay, all of the levels being so different, the boss characters being so unique, uh, 
just from start to finish. I can play that game right now and just start it and just won't stop until either I beat it or I have to stop. Uh, that game means a lot to me. Got me through a lot of times as a kid when nothing else seemed like it was going right. Streets of Rage 2 was always there. Uh, those of you who have not played it, I really invite you to play it. Or if you uh, feel like it's a little too old for you, I get it. Nothing personal. Try Streets of Rage 4. Fantastic and probably one of the best revivals I've seen from an old franchise. Um, thumbs up. Some of my friends that uh, I have now, we've run through Streets of Rage 4 together. And it's a beautiful time. Played it on stream. Played it at home. Just great games. But it, it all starts with Streets of Rage 2. Yes, Streets of Rage 1 did happen first. I don't count it. Neither should you. Streets of Rage 2. My personal number one game. So I wanted to share that with you all today. Again, if you played this game, let me know your thoughts on it. And if not, what are some other beat em up games or games like that that you really enjoyed? I'd like to hear about that as well. As always, like, share, comment, whatever you feel you know compelled to do. I appreciate you sticking around. You have a good one. Peace.